What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chef Smooth. Thank y'all for tuning in to episode seven of For the Soul Podcast. We're dedicated to helping change the holistic health habits of black and brown communities across the world and providing business tips and entrepreneur tips for our community. And today, I have a very special guest. Y'all, before I give this guest an introduction, it's very important that y'all know that For the Soul would not be here today if it wasn't for her efforts. And so for the, it's an amazing opportunity for me to be able to interview her during this time because she was so instrumental in helping me start this business. And we'll probably get into that later. I'll probably break down the story for you. But Yara Williams is joining us today, none other than the marketing extraordinaire. She does, she has done countless work for nonprofits, corporate companies, and also small businesses like myself to help us get up and running and get our marketing together. And so without further ado, I present to y'all DR. DR, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. That was just so sweet. <laughs> yeah, of course. I had to give you a flower because it's true. It would not, it would not have been able to start out without you. So I'm definitely appreciative of your efforts for helping me get this off the ground. And it's amazing to be able to highlight you and put you on the spotlight today for this interview. Well, thank you for having me. And oh, thank you for being open. You know, even when you were starting your business, like you were ready to learn. And honestly, that's yeah. it just makes my life a lot easier when you're just ready to get in there, figure it out. I don't know exactly what you're doing, but we're gonna figure it out while we go. <laughs> exactly, exactly, y'all. Because when I tell you I had no idea how I wanted anything to look, I was just like, Hey, I know what I wanted to do and you know, D, she was able to bring the vision to life, put the colors to it. And I'm like, I'm the type of person where it's just, I may not have the vision, but I know something looks good. And so she's yeah. like, okay, this is what I got. I'm like, all right, yes, this is it. So I was definitely, it's definitely been crucial for me for her help. And also with the marketing stuff that she helped me out with in the very beginning too. So yes, it's just, it's just amazing to be here and have an opportunity to have this conversation with you today and share your light with a new audience. Yeah, how exciting. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first, yeah. the first question I have, since we are doing it a little bit different today, there is no live audience, but I do want to ask, is there anything that you would like to do as far as your introduction for yourself? Let the people know who you are and what you do, or not cover yeah. everything. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can tell a little bit about what I'm currently doing, because I started in social media in 20, hmm, 2018-ish, 2018 2018-ish. Um, so it was a lot different than how it is now. Um, but changed my major from actually fashion, um, to marketing. And I just fell in love with marketing because I, but I don't like finance and accounting, you know, it's a definite answer to things. I love the creativity <laughs> of being a marketer and being able to come up whatever you wanted to come up with. Like it was no, like, end all be all and that just really inspired me um so right now in my work like I do a lot of uh, social media still because social media is popping I can't get away from it even if I wanted to (laughs) I tried um I really wanted to be just a like a counselor type person people can come to me with their questions but I still get stuck into doing social media which is cool um, right now, I'm doing a lot of work with like fashion and beauty brands, which is crazy because I went to school for fashion at first. So it's like full circle. <laughs> so um, now I'm like a brand manager for a natural hair care company. And also on the side, I am a UGC slash influencer for brands too. So uh, like how to get deals and how to reach out to, you know, brands and things like that. I'm your girl. I can, I can help you with that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She is busy, but she's popping, so it's a good thing. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get into the first question and just kind of take us back to where it all began. What made you interested in fashion? And what was the process like of switching from fashion into marketing? What kind of piqued your interest? Yeah, the crazy thing is when I grew up, I was kind of like a tomboy. Like I used to like cars and dirt and digging up words. <laughs> <laughs> and like randomly when I was like maybe 13 I wanted to like put on fashion shows uh for my family and at my grandmother's house like I just want to give you guys five outfits and let me know what you like I'm gonna run away through this for my grandmother house let me know how you feel <laughs> Um, and then my cousin, Jamal, um, he wanted me to be a model. So he was like my manager when I was like 13, 14 years old. So a lot of practicing with runways and uh, photography and things like that, being a print model. 
Um, and I think my love for fashion started there. And then in high school, like I was in like, my fashion just kind of, it was all over the place. So anybody that <laughs> knew me from high school watching this, they'll tell you. Um, but it was just a self still of how to self ex I express myself, like being able to play with different textures and colors and things like that. And just being able to be creative. So um, just kind of was like, I'm going to be more of the merchandise. I want to go into designing at first mm -hmm. and I changed to fashion merchandising. And um, little did I know a lot of science, like chemistry classes was involved in that. And I was like, mm, I don't think this is for me. So <laughs> um, I decided to, to change. But now I get to work with like small businesses, like accessory brands and fashion stylists. So you know, I still was able to get my way around it, but just in a different way. So for sure. And so yeah. what what was the cause, I guess, for you to what what caused a shift for you to want to go straight into marketing from from this? Yeah, what kind yeah. Of so, it was just like knowing what I was good at and not good at and being honest with myself <laughs> when I was in college, because yeah. I actually did business admin before I did marketing. Ooh. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I changed my major like three times. Um, so that did delay me a year, which is fine. I did it. I got it done. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so went from fashion merchandising from NIU, then I transferred to Aurora University um, for business admin, was like finance, accounting, not my thing, not my style. So let's do marketing. Um, and then I did a marketing one on one class and I loved it. Like I just loved just the so it was it was really like generic, like social media and customer relationships and things like that. Because with marketing is like always evolving. So it's hard to kind of teach on it because by the time you print that book out, it's already a big <laughs> yeah. entire new industry of marketing. It's always changing. So it was more broad about like how to be, you know, how to get customers and relationship building and things like that, which is still really instilled in my business now um, with all of the digital things that are going on. So, so yeah, that's how I kind of got started. It was just like knowing what I was good at and what I'm not good at. And um, I had a tutor for accounting and it was just like not clicking in my head. And I was like, I'm not even going to force myself to understand this at this point. Am I interested in going back for school? probably to get my business admin because I do want to brighten my scope a little bit more yeah. now because um, I wouldn't mind going into like business development for small businesses. So being able to be that finance, a uh, financial advisor and things like that. So now I'm probably in a space that it will make more sense because I am kind of messing with more money now with my own business and my full-time job too. So, um, so yeah, just kind of like going with the flow wherever God takes me. You know, I'm not trying to force things that I know that it's not in my path in this moment. So yeah, for that. I think mm -hmm. that's a really key thing that you touched on that I had to learn the hard way too. It's just like I would always force myself into spaces where I don't belong. It's like putting a square into a circle. You know what I mean? It's just like it's not that you you aren't good. It's just you may not be that's just not your calling, that's not your fit. And so the fact that you're able to realize that and pivot is like super critical. And I want everybody to make sure they take that away. If something's not clicking for you, don't force it. Get help. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Outsource people. Yeah. Yeah. As B knows, I am I live by delegation. I know yeah. what I'm good at. I know my lane and I try not to stretch myself when it comes to my own personal business. I try not to stretch yeah. myself in the areas where I know I just need to know a little bit so I can understand the language when I'm talking mm -hmm. to somebody that's professional in that field. But yeah. outside of that, I'm not gonna force myself to try to go in and do the hard the hard nitty gritty of it because I know mm -hmm. that's just not what I'm doing and it's gonna take away exactly. my capacity. For doing the things that I am good at and can focus on. So yeah, you can't be an expert at everything. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. I do want to ask you though, because you you brought up the point about marketing how it's always changing. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a firm believer that there's some some things that have been consistent throughout the course of human history when it comes to marketing. And I'm curious mm -hmm. if you kind of share some of those same things that anything that you may have realized that people maybe could take away that are consistent throughout mm -hmm. all these interchanging times with marketing specifically. People. That has been consistent and relationship building. So um, I forgot to mention that I do work at a non for profit. So I am a full time employee and full time entrepreneur. Yes, yes, I don't know how I fit in sleep, but somehow I do. <laughs> um, so 
working with uh, the one that God works is just crazy because he he gave you this opportunity to work in non profit, which is all about people power, like collective power, and um that instilled in me the importance of influence with marketing. Like you can't people really buy into brands because of the person, not because yeah. of their stuff. Right. Like even with Unity, like people, they they mess with you like they friends of you and just know of you. Right. Because you are a good person, you have a good soul. So people are like, OK, definitely going to purchase um, whatever he's selling. Right. <laughs> so like people notice that and just having conversations with people, getting to know people and not being so salesy um, and just really building those relationships has been really consistent. Um what else? Storytelling. Um, so I always tell my brands that I work with, what is your story? Why are you getting started with this? Because like people can tell if you're doing it for money or you're doing it through passion. <laughs> and I'm some people will buy into them, like, okay, you're selling because you need money. That's cool. But that kind of like falls so short sometimes because like your motive for money sometimes won't be enough. You have to have that passion yeah. so of you. So I always say, like, telling a part of your story, like, you don't have to tell them, like, your entire story, but, like, why are you connected to this brand? There yeah. has to be a reason behind it. Like, my brand, I, for my agency, I work with small businesses, people of color specifically, because I know how hard it is to pay for marketing services as a small business. And also, we don't get the same resources as being a small business owner and just seeing how small the small the the community is of black and women in the marketing agency so being able to be seen and heard that way and be a thought leader for those who may want to be marketers coming up you know maybe in high school or in you know college so definitely storytelling people power building um just building community is huge you can do that online. You can get creative. Like these type of lives, like any any brand can do lives like this. It doesn't matter if you're selling a service or you're selling a product. Like my one of my uh, clients, she sells accessories. So she have, you know, a live with people who are in the fashion industry or even a competitor and just talk about the trends of accessories. Like we gotta, I think, sometimes change the mindset of competitors and may be able to bring resources together. Because the way that I think of things are like, okay, we have, I don't think of a scarcity mindset. I think it's a lot of resources out here, like abundance resources. Yeah. So like being able to lean on each other um, is a great marketing tool as well. I think that's it. So, yeah, people power, yeah. loving, caring. You yeah, dropped so many times in there. I think that they're gonna be fit. I'm going to just take the time to highlight quickly. One, people in relationship building. That's the number one yeah. key, right? Any any type of business. The motivation. I, if you guys have been tuning in for the podcast for a while, we talk about start with your why. And money yeah. is not a strong enough why. And in mm -hmm. order to receive money, you have to give. You give exactly. before you give. And when it comes to storytelling with your brand, like, again, you don't have to put out any details that you don't want to, but try to be vulnerable with your audience. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we can't avoid hurt. Hurt is a guarantee in our life, right? So if you put out your story out there and it's not received the way that you want to, that's okay. That means that those people weren't meant to rock with you. And now yeah, you know. Be yourself. That's yeah, exactly. Just be yourself, trial and error. There's only one you in the world. Like, there's no other copy. So just be yourself and put yourself out there. And I think that's so very critical. Cool. Professional. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And... and there's so many gems that you touched on there. We're gonna make sure we clip, we gonna clip some of those up for the people for sure. Mm -hmm. I want to ask too. So now that you you kind of talked about some tools in the marketing, you've talked about what you do currently. What was the transition like for you from college into working full time in the marketing space and starting your own business? Can you walk Ooh. us through that journey? <laughs> One journey. <laughs> I know. Um, I to share it. <laughs> so. I would say my school did as, as best that they could possibly do, because like I said, marketing is always evolving. So you can only give like as much as you can when it comes to that, like the key basic things, like, like I said, relationship building. I took a lot of sales classes too. I was on the sales team. So I did like competitions of selling products and services. 
with some of the like bigger corporations. So that helped me like really understand how to communicate with people effectively. So taking that into my first job, I was grateful enough to receive a full-time job right after college, working at a long-term care pharmacy. So I was in healthcare doing their marketing. Um, so right out, <laughs> was <laughs> it was a lot. Um, so this was a new position for the, the company. So they never had anybody doing their marketing. So I did everything. Um, so I did social media, website edits, uh, PR. So anything, if it was an event, I don't have to write about it, just send it out. Um, I did a lot of writing, um, emails, um, specifically when it came to trade shows was a lot of my like work. So project management, we did mm -hmm. about 20 to 30 trade shows per year. So I had to make sure everybody was set with that, you know, tabling, brochures, um, so I did a lot of graphic designs to make sure those were updated. So I had an internship before then, because like I said, I changed my major. So I already felt like I was behind, um, with everything because I'm like, girl, you just came from fashion to pretty much finance <laughs> and now you're doing marketing. So I was like, oh, I'm so behind. So I networked my butt off so I can get me a, um, two internships actually, um, one was a small agency, black owned, woman owned, and then I worked in security. Um, so I wasn't going in fully blind because I was able to have those internships that allowed me to like teach myself graphic design. So Adobe, mm -hmm. so I taught myself the entire year how to do that. Well, summer, um, and a lot of that stuff like instilled in me before my job. But because it was a new position, it was hard for me to understand exactly where I fit. And then like, even for the company. Um, so I think it the, the hardest thing was kind of like being the only black girl, black woman there mm -hmm. um, in this type of corporate setting um, and just kind of learning the ins and outs of being that like new girl just straight out of college too. So they already don't think like, oh, she might not know too much and things like that. So um, trying to like prove myself was kind of stressful at times. And, you know, just trying to like work as hard as I can, but still not really being seen or heard in the space. Um, and even like having to be quiet because people are like, D, like be careful with who you talk to because they might, you know, say something because they might think you're just talking and not doing work, you know? So it was just like a lot of pressure to be right, act right. You know, this was a full-time position too. So it was just like, yeah. it was just stressful. <laughs> uh, so I would say like, that was the hardest thing is just like trying to fit in in space and get my foot wet into this industry um, being like a new, a new person, like a new career woman out of college. So, um, but I learned a lot, like being able to get thrown in the fire, best way to learn. Just don't know exactly what you're doing, but you're going to figure yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because I never did project management before. Like I had the design on deck, like writing deck, but project management over 20, 30 trade shows. And, and then I was able to actually create, design, small events to healthcare events. So like I was doing everything. So, like, so it was a lot to learn, but now I look back like, dang, I'm so happy that I was able to have that opportunity because yeah. now, like, now I can do any of that. If I need to get a new job, like I go on an event, I can go into graphic design. Like I have so many different paths that I can go down. So, Of course. I, I, I want to, before we move on to the next part of your story, I do want to ask you a quick question because you brought it up twice now and, and the fact of the coming across as salesy, I feel like there's a very fine line that somebody has to tread when you're offering, when you're, when you're just in business in general, like you need to sell, sales are a very important skill that you need to learn. So in your experience, what are some tips and tricks that people can utilize to not come off as salesy, like the typical salesperson, but just come from a genuine place? For yeah. and still be able to be successful in sales. Yeah, so I definitely don't like cold calling. So cold calling could be, you know, a phone call, email, um, DM. Because I always say slide in the DM, but like be attentional with that. Like if you are writing out an email, trying to work with a business or selling your product or service, like at least know a little bit about them. 
like do some research, follow them around, like stalk them, <laughs> stalk them on LinkedIn, stalk them on Instagram, get to know them. So like y'all can start off with a just a genuine conversation, like, oh, congratulations. I seen that you got a new product out, like kind of put the sunshine on them first before you ask them to, to buy something from you or to support you. So sales, it just takes, it's a journey. So like sometimes cold calls work, you know, and things like that. But majority of times, <laughs> like you got to warm that lead up a little bit. So sure. like, you know, like comment, even support them or buy their product. Hey, you know, or if it is like, if it's not B2B and it's B, you know, to C, still support that. However, that individual, like, what are they talking about in their stories? Can you comment in that conversation? Like, is it their birthday? Say happy birthday. Like, start like acting as that is your friend, like your best friend before you ask them to purchase anything. Um, Cause you just get a little weary, like, oh, this sounds so salesy. Like, <laughs> I don't want to buy anything now, but like, maybe I'll put you in a safe. But like having those conversations, um, even if they're having like an event, come out to the event, peep the scene out, like have a conversation with them, have a conversation with the target market that they are a part of. Like, you just have to put the work in before, like, before you do anything else. All right, cool. I definitely appreciate it because this stuff I already know about. Definitely kind of like been on the the cold calling side recently in LinkedIn. And I'm like, ah, I feel like LinkedIn is a little bit different. So I might have to ask you some tips on that. Uh, yeah, like LinkedIn, you just gotta watch them like a hawk, okay? So <laughs> see what kind of updates they have going on. Do they have a virtual event that you can go to, like? Or do the, watch their status and see if you can comment, start a conversation, hop in their DM to, you know, continue that conversation. Um, okay. So they can kind of like get to know you and your face and your brand before they like, just go in, you know. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I'm definitely going to ask you when we stop recording, just a quick tip. But no, thank you for that. I definitely want a clarification because it is a very fine line. It's difficult, right? Like, yeah, you, oh yeah, absolutely. Not, you obviously want to get a sale, but you don't want to come across as that person. Right, mm -hmm. where it's, like, it's cringy almost to a certain degree. Um, yeah. so I definitely appreciate you for sharing that. I'm gonna get back on track now and talk about the development of the business. So, what made you think that entrepreneurship was a thing that you genuinely wanted to do? Was it something that you've always been kind of interested in growing up? Is there some did you have a lot of entrepreneurs in the family? Just walk us through what sparked your interest in entrepreneurship and how the journey got started for you. So, I was a young girl and entrepreneur, okay? I was entrepreneur. I, I was selling candy at like 10 years old. Like <laughs> I had at my grandmother's house, like not even, I was in fashion, but also I was selling candy. Like I was like, hey guys, come over. I got candy. So of course, you know, I'll increase the price so I can get a profit. <laughs> and then I even started like um, at my school. I was in elementary school, I think. I think I was in elementary school. Um, I used to tell people, I have candy for the low, like sign up. Here's my sign up sheet. I will have candy every Tuesday. Let me know if you want candy, bring your money. I'm your girl. So like, <laughs> I already started out young doing this stuff, like being an entrepreneur, trying to make money. Um, and that just helped me like instill who I am now. Um, and honestly, Ebony really, Ebony Sims, she the one who pushed me. Shout really out to Ebony, uh, definitely watch her episode too, y'all. <laughs> yes, my ship, my lovely ship, my motivator, my big sister, that's who she is to me. But, um, so I honestly was hesitant at first about starting my business because I think I was just like, I'm going to put it in a bag burner. I got too much stuff going on and like. I just know I'm not going to be able to cater to it like I need to cater to it. Right. I was like, I don't have a logo. I don't have a name. I don't have this. I don't have that. And, and Evan was just like, just get your LLC and then just figure everything out. Um, so in 2021, I think November 2021, um, I decided to file my LLC. And then that's when it kind of like sparked some fire in me to finally get everything else together for it. So I was like, I have the talent, I have the experience, but I need help with like the branding part of it. And just like, 
you know, website and everything like that. But yeah. uh, I decided just to take some time out to do my own thing um, for the time being, because I felt like I was sitting on this, sitting on this gem, this gift, <laughs> something that God gave me for too long. It was just time to put it out there. So I did. Um, I did. And it has been a, a journey for sure. Still learning for sure. Um, the first year I didn't do too much for my business because of my job I was working at. Yeah. I was working at a marketing ag agency full time and it took up all of my time in my life. Like I slept with my computer in my bed. Like I would wake up and work, go to sleep before, like work before I go to sleep. And I had to put everything on the back burner for that. But now that I'm back not for profit, I have a lot more time to cater to my business. And I am so grateful. And I say, I say, I thank God all the time because like I haven't really had to market myself. Everything like kind of just came to me. Every client that I had is a uh, word of mouth. Somebody put a good word in and they was like, you gotta work with D. Then that's mm -hmm. it. Like one of my clients was like, yeah, I'm gonna refer you to my friend, my other friend. And that's just how like it's been for me. Like, cause if you see my, if you go to my agency, my Instagram page, I haven't posted since, I don't know, like five months ago. So like, I don't do too much marketing myself because of course I got clients, but like, it's a blessing that I haven't had to really put myself out there. Like people kind of just see my drive or my personal and they're like, I see you doing your thing. I want to work with you. So like, I, I'm just super grateful for that. Um, and yeah, but well, entrepreneurship has been a huge roller coaster for sure. Um, still trying to get like the back end, like business credit. I've been really like researching and building that up now. Um, I've talked to a few like small business um, advisors mm -hmm. to make sure like my LLC insurance, like making sure I have insurance and everything's in good standing with the state. Because it's cool to make money, but you got to make sure, like, all of that back end mm -hmm. stuff. Too. <laughs> like, so uh, she was able to, like, tell me what I need to do and um, what's already done, what I'm in good standing, if I'm not in good standing. So um, just kind of, like, doing a lot of the back end stuff right now, making sure I'm straight. So. Yes. Hey, mm -hmm. Another big takeaway from that. Work with D. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard it here first. I mean, y'all for anybody that's referred that's art that she's already been or have already referred to her. That yeah, y'all need to work with D. D will be charming. Lessons in your journey. What would you say is like, especially we'll, we'll focus on entrepreneurship and then we'll come back to marketing. Do you have any specific advice, any specific gems that you would like to give anybody that you've learned along your lesson that you feel like was super impactful? Mm, I say have a plan, but like. Don't be afraid to have to pivot. Um, I'm reading this book. I think it's called Emergent Strategy or something like that. And basically, it's telling you to flow like water. So, mm -hmm. like, the importance of having a plan, I'm not just saying, like, just do stuff because it feels right. Or, like, have a have a plan. But God said, you know, write a plan, like, make it plain. Plan. Uh, so I think it's just important as an entrepreneur to know, like, things can change daily, weekly for you. And being able to kind of be flexible through that will make you stronger and won't stress you out as much because you're like, okay, like here's a problem, but now I know like how to pivot. Um, definitely problem, problem solving is definitely is key. Being able to be strategic with your problem solving, if you have an issue, like, okay, how am I going to work this out? Do I need to bring somebody in to help me to something that I can do on my own, you know, prioritizing and things like that. Um, and balance is a huge thing um, yeah. for entrepreneurship because if you are leading with passion, sometimes your passion can take over your life <laughs> in a good way or bad way. I know like sometimes I can sit on my computer for five hours because I'm just, no, I love this project I'm working on. But it's like, did you, did you eat? Did you take a, like, did you breathe? Do some deep breathing? Did you have Walk some water? Some 
Because one thing that I've been noticing about entrepreneurs that one of the biggest things is that we we are ending up in a hospital because we're dehydrated. Like somebody that I'm working with now is literally in a hospital because of dehydration, having too much on his plate, being an entrepreneur. So like taking care of yourself is super important. Therapy, mm -hmm. going out to work. I have a trainer, like, so that kind of having a trainer helps me like prioritize working out. I know I'm paying for one. <laughs> <laughs> to like if I know I gotta be there at 6 30 then I have to be there at 6 30 mm -hmm. so like that helps me get a break from working to to work out and it helps with my mental a lot like I have ADHD and anxiety so it's super important for me to have like those breaks because with ADHD you can really like hyper focus on things for hours and you forget about everything else so like it's good for me to take those breaks um and networking for sure like right now why not for profit we're doing like a lot of networking for like funding and resources for the organization but like thinking about it as your your own business too so like i created a goal sheet for the whole year so every quarter i need to go to at least two networking events I'm not saying any networking event. I'm talking about being intentional with it, being strategic with it. Like, oh, I know this person's gonna be there. I really want to work with her. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know, get that ticket there. Like, make sure you're there. Um, have your business cards. Um, and now that like everything is pretty much open, like be able to do that. And if you're still like not comfortable with going outside because of the pandemic, understood. It's still a lot of virtual, you know, things that you can do as well. So, networking, just leading with care and love. That's why I always say, sleep with your Yeah, sleep with your love. There's a lot of gems in there, so I appreciate you for sharing <laughs> that with us. I'm going to ask you for some more gems for the audience, but and not related to entrepreneurship per se, but specifically to marketing. If Is there any, any general advice that you would give to any small business owner who is maybe, or any business owner, period, who is watching this podcast and their journey for trying to make sure they're developing the best marketing plan for themselves? Yeah, marketing plan. Hmm, love those. Um, <laughs> any type of strategy, strategic tricks. Yeah. Um. So I definitely will say when it comes to a marketing plan, keep it plain. Um. So I usually do three pillars. Well, first I go through the goal. So and KPI. So key. Yeah. Um, what was it? Key performance indicators. So let's just say you got two KPIs and one of them is I want to grow my social media uh, following by 500 by quarter three. So that's like, okay, how are we, we going to do that? So of course, engagement is a part of that awareness um, and knowing like, okay, the video is huge right now and it helps with a lot with your reach. So like making sure those are some of your bullet points. So like really putting out your goals. Honestly, we'll keep it up between like two or three goals. Like you don't want to have too many. That's just like adding more stress yeah. to you. Um, and then I go into um, like content creation and planning. So I usually do three pillars. So content pillars, which is education, entertainment, and what's the other one? Do influence or like education, and sales, like some sales content too. But to remember that only about 10 to 20% of your content should be sales related. So everything else should be like educational, entertainment, or relationship building. So then once you have your goals and you have your three pillars, then that's when you're starting to kind of come up with your content plan, your strategy. So like with entertainment or if it's anything that you really want to focus on with your business, like any pain points. So if you are, um, let's just say a hair care, natural hair care brand and for black women for 4C hair. Um, so educational piece for the, the month can be um, dry hair. So how do you nurture your dry hair? How do you hydrate your dry hair? Is it with oil? Is it with leave-in? And going through kind of those steps um, 
entertainment can be, you know, anything that's going on in the world, I usually say, like Beyonce is touring. So like, how can you kind of maybe put those two together um, or anything else that the shade room or like anyone else is kind of like talking about right now, like stick, you got to kind of have your nose in with everything and see what kind of memes are popping um, and what kind of videos are popping too that can be educational or actually entertaining as well. Um, so like education can definitely like a video can be popping up like different texts, like five ways to, um, nurture your hair, your dry hair for five, four C hair. And then you're like looking this way and just like popping in text, um, that helps and using the correct hashtags. Um, so just like kind of going through like the process of what you want. I always think of like themes, monthly themes, like, okay, what do we want to talk about this month? You know, the summer's coming, like think outside the box of like what you got in your brain and how you can connect your product or service to the outside world. So we know, okay, it's May 20th, like summer's coming up. So a lot of people are going to have braids. A lot of people are going to have protective styles. So how can I relate my products to what's going on in the world? Protective styles, like what do you need? You need oils, you need leave-in conditioners, you know, and things like that to protect your hair through these protective styles so you won't have any breakage. So I would definitely say like a lot of that deals with your content creation. Um, and a part that is really your strategy. And another thing when it comes to strategy is competitors. I, your competitors, like have a good three, five competitors that you look up to or your brand is aligned to, um, look at the comments. So like if I am, let's just say, if I am selling a leave-in conditioner, then let me look at all the leave-in conditioners for far C hair, look at the reviews, what people don't like about it, what they love about it, especially what they don't like. So I can make sure my leave-in conditioner is fulfilling those issues that yours mm -hmm. cannot. <laughs> um, so, like definitely like eye all of that like do your research before you do anything else like see what is out there it's plenty of room for you but don't go in there blind like make sure you are doing your research research and seeing how their social media strategy is too like um when it comes to uh hairstyling or being a hair care company a lot of before and afters is popping like you got to see like, okay, is that leave-in conditioner actually working? Is that gel going to make my curls pop? Because I need to make sure. Like, I got to make sure that if sis said it is, then I will be able to purchase it, you know? So having that kind of, ooh, I guess, testimonials. Yeah, testimonials are right. super helpful. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I appreciate you for that because this episode is going to be great. I'm going to get so we're going to get <laughs> clips off of this that that will be able to give some bite sized gem pack, um, little yeah. clips for everybody to take away from. So I appreciate you for dropping on the knowledge on this. I'm even learning a lot too. So I'm going to be tips as I go back and look through my marketing strategy and my plan and my pillars, my three pillars. Yes, yeah, so content oh. pillars. Yes, yes, the content pillars. I'm going to ship yours into the last part of the interview and allow, I want to ask you about mental health and being, how navigating mm -hmm. mental health um, as an entrepreneur in the marketing industry, as a black woman, whatever it is that you would like to, to share with the audience as far as navigating these spaces in regards to your mental health. And maybe, you know, somebody out there may feel inspired from you saying that, you know, being vulnerable about how you have ADHD and anxiety, but still be able to work on your own personal business and work for a company and do all these great things in the community. So I definitely am going to leave the floor open to you to just kind of share whatever it is that you would like to on that topic. Yeah. So mental health. Um, so starting with, I guess my family, um, and the stigma of mental health and just black, you know, black community around mental health. Um, my sister, um, was depressed a few years ago, and she was the first one who I like, openly came out about mental health in my in my community and family. And at first, it was like really like uncomfortable um, to have that experience and like be so close to it because it was something that we weren't used to and didn't know how to handle it. Um, what questions? What support do you need? Um, 
So, and she's my little sister. Um, and she really gave me the the courage to um, look inside and make sure, like, do I have any, like, am I depressed? You know, do I have any anxiety? And, um, yeah, so I decided to, like, get into therapy. Um, some of the biggest things, let's see. My like anxiety, my anxiety got really bad in like 2020, so the pandemic. That's um, yeah, yes. So, like, I had a few episodes that I actually called 911 because I felt like I couldn't breathe, like, I was straight on a panic attack, heart beating down my chest, um, falling to the floor, like, thinking I'm dying. Um, and that happened like probably four or five times that year. Um, and that's when I was like, okay, I need some type of help. Um, and being vulnerable in that, like, okay, I know something's going on here with me. And I think a lot of it had to do with, yes, it's a pandemic, so I didn't want to get sick. I'm scared of that. Um, and then like the change in my life, because like you said, I'm super busy, super busy girl. So like having to change my life from being busy, 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 like, Sunday to Sunday, Sunday, Saturday, and then like everything positive, I did not go, didn't do well with that. And I know a lot of people didn't. Um, so I like got in my brain more, like thinking something's wrong with me. And so I decided to go to get into therapy um, and just find ways. The first thing first is like being able to Say what it is. So I was like, okay, this is anxiety. Like, I got bad anxiety. So what are we going to do to help? So I found ways to cope. Um, some of them was like the five senses. So if I did feel like a panic attack was coming on, I'll um, smell something, hear something, look at something, touch something. Um, and that helped me get back present. So a lot of anxiety is because you think there's something else that's not even happening. Yeah. Right? Like you think about something that happened 10 years ago or you think of something that might happen in, in 10 years. So mm -hmm. <laughs> because of that and just knowing that it's like, okay, D, you're fine right now in this current moment. Nothing's going on with you. You're good. So sometimes I have to not curse myself out. Like, girl, get like get yourself together. Like, you're good. <laughs> you, you did this before. So now like now that I'm so like used to it, I'm like, okay, D, you're having another episode. What can you do to make you feel better? Oh, okay, let me go work out. I know if I burn a sweat, I'll be good. Or let me listen to a song that I love. Or let me watch something that's gonna get my mind off of everything. Deep breathing helps too. Yeah. Um, so I do a lot of deep breathing for anxiety. Um, talking to friends, talk to my sister, like. When it comes to anxiety, the only person that really gets me is one well, my best friend too. She got anxiety, like calling them up. Cause some people are like, oh, do you tweaking? You're doing too much. And I'm just like, I don't want to be doing too much right now, to be honest. But <laughs> my brain is making me do too much. So like, um, so just have like a support system that understands is super important. Um, because if you don't know it, then like it's just hard to be around people that don't understand. Cause it's like you always gotta fight, like, and stand up for your rights. So I have mental health, like, mental health. So, um, support system and therapy um, helped me a lot. So just coping and being able to talk through things. Um, the anxiety part, I have. I feel like I got more of a hold on it now. It don't bother me as much. Um, but my ADHD is another. <laughs> Another thing, so I got diagnosed with ADHD in last year, last summer, last spring, yeah. And it came, so I think I always had a little bit of ADHD, but it was very noticeable in my agency job. And when that really stressed me out, like um, I started using symptoms, like having symptoms like attention to detail, like messing up on things that mm -hmm. could be like why didn't you see that like why are you yeah. seen that over <laughs> you seen that was not the right thing um or easily like forgetting things um and it started really affecting my work and I was like I can't I can't do this like this is not gonna work I need help so I decided to get on medication I'm not uh, I'm not 
advising or Mm -hmm. recommending that to anyone, but this is what that I needed to get back on track. Um, so got on medication and it really helped me soothe my brain and be able to, it didn't take away ADHD, but it helped me at least maintain where I am now, um, to figure out like, okay, things still going on. Cause right now I'm still very forgettable. <laughs> we ADHD people, what do they call? I think it's like, um, short term brain or something like that. But if we don't do it in that moment, then we're going to forget it. Like, yeah. oh, I got to take out the trash. Like now I got it in my brain. But once I get off of here, good, probably going to forget. So like we, so some things that I do, I use my calendar. Like my calendar looks crazy because I have to put down everything on there or I, it's not happening. So like having that, being very detailed, taking my time is super important. I'm drinking coffee now, but like usually like I can't have too much coffee or it makes me really antsy and my brain mm. is like all over the place. Different foods. Yeah. <laughs> Food is <laughs> I can't eat like a lot of sweets, anything that has a lot of sodium in it affects my mental health tremendously. Fried foods, all of that um, impacts my health, my mental health. Um, so just like finding ways to cope. Like my first thing was like my sister always told me, like, okay, just be like, what is it? Accept what's going on, like accept it. Cause I used to just like push my anxiety away, like it's not happening, it's not happening. But when I finally accept, like, okay, this is who I am, like this is what I deal with. Let's see what we can do to make my life a little bit easier. So I've been putting in like different exercises to help. Like I said, working out really helps. Meditation, I know probably help, but <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm not that focused, but that is definitely a goal for me. But yeah, just really being able to organize, being organized is probably the biggest thing that really helped me with my ADHD. It's like literally putting everything on my calendar. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, but still, it was all good information. I'm pretty sure that there's something that somebody can pull out of there easily. Uh, not quite a few things to help them when they're on mental health. So, yeah. well, another thing is ADHD, you talk a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, right, but when you're giving gems, you feel me? There's, there's, it's all good. Talk more, right? So, yeah. I think, I think that they'll be able to pull a couple of different things they can put in their tool belt to help them. And I also, I want to add too, if for anybody that's struggling with anxiety, I mean, for me, it's always been never really been past stuff, but whenever I do get anxious about future stuff or things that are coming mm-hmm. up. And the best cure for fear is action. So sometimes I just, you know, take a deep breath, close my eyes and just take the leap. And then I just notice all the anxiety just goes away because mm-hmm. I acted on what I was afraid of, right? Because f- anxiety is rooted in fear. You overcome the fear, the root cause of it, the anxiety goes away. And it's worked mm-hmm. for me every time. It's not, it's easier said than done for sure. But like, it's just like, do you, for me, it's just in my head, I'm like, all right, do you want to keep feeling anxious or you just want to go ahead and do it and be on the other side of it? And for me, it's just like, let me just go ahead and be on the other side of this instead of drawing out this anxiety that mm-hmm. I have to support the situation. So um, yeah, definitely, exactly. uh, I appreciate yeah. you being transparent and actually practicing what you preach because we talked about storytelling earlier in the show. And I don't know if y'all know this, but there's definitely a story that she told. So mm-hmm. um, thank you for practicing what you preach. We always appreciate that here. Of course. As we approach the end of the interview, I want to roll out the red carpet for you. Is there anything that you have that are going on that you would like to share with the people? Where can they find you? Where they can get connected? Because y'all, y'all didn't know y'all need D, but y'all need D. Now so. y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all know. Um, so yeah, my Instagram, my personal Instagram is Debri, D-E-E-B-R-I. So that's all my UGC influencer lifestyle content um, that I roll out and just like personal stuff too. Um, my business IG is at DW Digital, so DW yeah. Digital. Uh, I don't post on there that much, but hopefully soon. <laughs> but definitely my personal, like, in tune. I have good TikToks too. I've been uh, post. I love to eat, so I love trying new restaurants. So I post all my fun things yes. on there. And I think that's it. I'm not really on Twitter, so yeah, those three would be the okay. best way to touch. So hop in the DMs, like have conversations. If you need anything, like I said, marketing, influencer, UGC content, um, like partnerships, 
how to approach people like for business partnerships, like let me know. Or if you want to just talk about mental health, like, or you need a good restaurant in Chicago, let me know. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks y'all. She will get y'all right if you are ever in the shine, for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and, and let everybody know. So I want to say thank you, B, personally, for taking the time out to be on here today. I hope that the audience was able, I mean, not even hope, y'all should have been able to get a lot of gems out of the conversation that we have had today. And that should just give you a glimpse that you need B. I'm going to keep saying it. So um, thank you again so much for tapping in with us today. And thank you to the audience for continuing to support the platform. Please make sure that you like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a review, tell a friend to tell a friend, whatever the case may be. Let them know what we have going on here for the soul. Um, as far as what's going on on my end, be on the lookout for the first vegan cookbook. I'm kind of I'm doing my marketing strategy for it right now. So hopefully that will be out within the next month or so. Um, Hundred followers away from getting to the point where I'm like, all right, now I can drop it. So yeah, we're making progress. We're making progress. So that be on the lookout for that. Um, and then I'm working on a very big project that I'm keeping hush hush for right now. But definitely stay tuned because this one's gonna be good. So yes, make sure that y'all are continuing to stay up to date with the journey. I'm excited yeah. to see what that big project. I don't even know what it is, y'all. No, he doesn't even know what it is. I might tell. I might tell her after we stop recording. But we gonna see. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell her. But thank you all again for tuning in. And until next time, peace.